Righto. Um, surprise, surprise, got to buy another car. So, how's this one work? Marketplace. I'm a bit hesitant, to be honest. Like, I, um, it's the sun better. No, it's just as bad everywhere. Um, tried to buy this a week ago. It went up for sale. Tried to buy it straight away. Guy didn't get back to me for a couple of hours. And then this morning, which is like a week later, it's come up again, and I've got mates sending me links to it. Message him, it's three hours away, so I've got the truck sitting there ready to go. I've just finished my morning jobs. Yeah, let's go and um, buy a WRX, I hope. We'll see how we go. As long as the body, as long as it's got a clean title and the, um, the body doesn't have hail damage or massive dents or anything like that, I don't really care about the motor. But um, yeah, supposedly it ran when it parked. So let's get into it. Compulsively bought that. It's not too bad. It's been sitting a long time. I can about 11 years or something So the you can see the rust on the front pulleys smashed windscreen that bits inside The interior is dirty, but it's not trashed as such like the door trims are actually quite good. They're normally gone through here I've got other switches. I've got another car there just a normal car to give me the bits and pieces I need it doesn't smell like mice. It smells more like grass but um That door there is probably the worst thing but yeah, so pretty happy. It's got a tow bar, which is very surprising. But yeah, a bit of paint fade up on the top here. Right, pretty okay. happy. So she's off the truck. And we'll have a bit of a look through and see what we've got. I did notice when it was on the truck, it's been painted from those doors. See, it's a slightly different colour. It doesn't matter. It's got to get painted anyway. But um, there's that. The windscreen's cracked. Inside... I've got other another couple of these ones which are parts cars so those dash pieces and stuff I'd have we'll go through this and clean some of the crap out there is some of the interior pieces and stuff here still which is good like all the door trims and that are pretty good I don't know what this junk is all that'll clean up the seats aren't ripped or anything it's just dirty it's been sitting a long time bit of paint fade up there another ding there Tail lights are good because they are hard to get good tail lights and it's hard to get a good rear bar too. This one's pretty good. Um, have to get take some tint off and stuff, but we'll get it retinted. But under the engine bay, you can see they haven't even tried to turn it over, which they said they hadn't, which is good. So they've just left it alone. Oil is well, it's got oil. That's all that really matters. Um, water, nothing, but I don't see anything that's terrible in there, like it's been sealed up, so, yeah, there's, um, this stuff here, I don't know if it's actually a, a rat's nest, or whether it's just fallen down, it seems to have just fallen down, because there isn't a lot of rat shit or anything, there's a little bit of eaten there by mice, we're missing a plug lead, that sucks. It sucks a lot, actually. All right, so why would we be missing a plug lead? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go find a plug lead. Now I might put some power to it and we'll see if it turns over. Righto. I don't know. Apparently the story is it sat for 11 years. Sort of the same story as Nicole's WRX where the kids got older and couldn't really fit in the car anymore. So, um, yeah they parked it up and this is where it ended up that's a little bit worrying that the air cleaner thing's been off for a while but um we'll have a look other than that it's not too bad like headlights are still in good shape most of the indicators and stuff are good too um it's a pretty solid car from what i can see so i'm gonna go grab the jump pack and we'll see if she turns over those belts are just going to chew out with those rusty pulleys on it. They're absolutely atrocious, but you've got to start somewhere. I might just make sure that that plug lead that's missing, there's actually a plug in that cylinder. That's probably my first thing. 
Righto, jump pack's on. So let's see how many Ks or whether the electrics actually work or who knows. So, ignition on, nothing. Nothing at all. That is not a good sign. Righto, play around with this battery. Righto, she's done some Ks. 310,000 Ks. Righto, let's see if she'll turn over. Cross your fingers. I'll just go for a bit and build some oil pressure. Well, I'm quite happy with that. That actually sounded pretty good for something that sat for a long time. So I'll let that just sit for a sec and I'll give it another turnover before we stick some fuel down it. The fuel in the tank is going to be absolutely putrid. It says that there's three quarters of a tank, and I hope there isn't. I really hope there isn't. I might check to see if there's a drain plug. It's not terrible. All right, next step will be a plug lead, a Subaru plug lead. I think there's a car up the top over there. So let's go down and see if we can't find a plug lead. There's one I prepared earlier. So we'll just get into this and get that front plug lead. And um, yeah, this will be a donor. Give me a bit of bits and pieces I need for the interior and stuff like that. Cause this one should still be pretty complete inside. Successful mission, one plug lead. So we get a plug lead, we'll get our spray bottle with our fuel. And we'll shove some down the throat of it. And we'll see if she fires. Well, let's hope so anyway. We'll see what happens. I don't really care if the motor's rooted. I'm pretty happy with it anyway. So, But anyway, cross our fingers, start her up. That plug lead was too short. I was just searching through the car for um, uh, plug leads. I couldn't find any, just pulled crap out. But that's not a good sign for a Subaru. Is a thing of coolant in the boot. But that plug lead was too short, so I'm gonna head back over to this red one and get the longest one I can find off that car because the motor is slightly different because it's an aspirated motor not a turbo one so the coils in a different spot but anyway here we go nope no good so this one's too short too I've got a forest out the front here I might go check it worst case scenario I've got some WRX's out the back I don't really want to pull them off the WRX's but you gotta do what you gotta do here we go where's this forest up here we go it's in here where all my hopes and dreams go to die Oh, maybe Look at that Volvo diff. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see what these plug leads here are going to do for us. Yeah. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, I think they will. I'll find the longest one. No good. So there you go. We've all learnt something today. WRX leads on a GC8 are bigger than normal Forester and aspirated cars. So it looks like we're stealing stuff off one of the WRXs in the backyard. Right, here we go. What are these bonnets open, are they? Yep, sweet. Oh, right, oh. Here we go. One of these ones will do. Let's make sure I return it. That one won't work. It's got different coils on it. I need the other style, which I'm pretty sure that car there is standard. This one's got, yeah other shit going on. Righto. Number two. Let's have a look. That's well, got the same one. That's the right style there, see with the point. Right, I'll get this off. No, actually it doesn't have the point, it's just broken. <sighs> Righto, I'm just gonna have to get one of them off because you need the long things that go into the spark plug, so I'll get one of those ones off and then um, modify it to make it fit, I suppose. Why is nothing ever easy? You'd think I'd have enough crap around here to do what I want. Righto, it won't be perfect, but at least it'll just get us started, I think. So, yeah, let's have a look. You can see now what I was talking about, where that's got like your EFI plug on it, whereas this is a normal one, so the other ones must have had aftermarket coils, but we will just jam that on there for now and cross our fingers a lot. So, righto, I'm gonna get some fuel to shove in there to see if we can't get it to, oh, Actually, I might undo the inner cooler and put it in through there. I'll make some decisions and I'll show you in a second. 
Righto, so I have disconnected the inner cooler, right? Which means straight from there into there is the throttle body, which means into the manifold, into the engine. So I treat fuel injected cars the same as a carbureted car. Whereas I just pour fuel in the throttle body, which is the same as pouring it down the throat for carby. Aero start, yes, works. I will get some, but I prefer to use fuel. Like if you just wet it, you wet the plugs, it starts to get, uh, see what happens. But I find that fuel works better. As you've seen in other cars that I've done before, like <sighs> had someone else here that used to just want to use aero start. I'm not a big fan of it. It will help at times, but we'll see. Um, right, so we've got it turning over. We should have built some oil pressure. Let's pour some fuel in, hit the key and see what's going to happen. Righto, I can't find my spray bottle, petrol spray bottle. I'm running out of daylight. So I'll roll old school and just tip it in out of the bottle. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's going to go quickly anyway, so we'll just give her a bit and open up those, make sure they're not seized or anything. That'll let a bit in. We'll see what happens. All right, let's see what it's gonna do, eh? Make sure it's gone in. I don't think it'll start on this one, but it might give us just a boop. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, where's the key? Here we go, righto. Oh, shit, okay, well that, um, that was very successful. Very, very, very successful. Righto. Um, well, I'm absolutely gobsmacked to be honest. <laughs> Who thought that was gonna happen? There was a bit of noise going on there, so that would have built oil pressure. I'll put the inner cooler back on and we'll try it again. Yeah, well, all right. Uh, are you surprised? Because I am, I'm, I'm absolutely surprised. Righto. Um, just do a few more checks and I'll be back with you. Hang on. Righto, so I've done the intercooler back up. Um, I've taken the spanner, the socket off there. I just tried to pull the um, timing thing off to check the timing belt to see if it's gonna, is snapped. But I have noticed these belts here are really, really bad. So let's see if she's gonna run. Like I was bloody amazed that that ran before, but here we go. So. It's not running off fuel. No. I don't know if there's any fuel in the tank. I don't know if the fuel pump's working. I think it was only running off that fuel I was sticking down the throat. So I think it might be a case of pull that off and we'll run it off the squirt bottle and put some fuel in the tank and see if it'll pick up. That's a result though, it runs. That's all I'm worried about, which is awesome. Right, so we're running out of daylight again. So how is that? Like, obviously the timing belt's fine, which is good. I had to cut the bolt heads off to get that cover off enough to look, but at least I know it can run now, and the slapping noise is those front belts. It's dark now, so it's hard to see, guys. But did you see the crap coming off the belt? So I'm actually wondering now if some of these are actually seized up, perhaps. So anyway, um, I'm running out of daylight now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna sort out some sort of fuel system, work out whether the fuel pump's working, and go from there. So next thing is fuel. So I'll take a jerry can home with me, get a um, get some fuel, put that in it, lift it up. Yeah, fuel is the next thing because it turns over. We know it runs. The timing belt now we know is not going to let go and bend valves. Um, it will have to get done because it sat for a long time. But at least we know we can get it to go. I'm going to have to replace all those belts off the front of the motor. I don't know if any of those other cars are the same, but. We're getting there, we're getting there. That there was in the airbox. That crap just here, like all that. But luckily the when I started it yesterday, the airbox was off like that, so. Righto, I'm out of daylight. And the mosquitoes will be out right. soon. Um, I've just put some fuel in it. Uh, and I turned it over once and that belt just lost it. So that was just the aircon belt. Um, what I'm gonna do, is put fuel directly into the manifold. I've put fuel in the tank. I can't hear the pump running, right? But um, just, that's just the vacuum line that goes to the blow valve, so that'll be directly into the manifold. 
see how much I spill or how good I am. So just pour it in there. It's just like pouring fuel down the throat of a carby. The manifold goes into the same spots, the valves will open. It's just not squirting. You wouldn't want to drive around doing it because it'll lean it out. But yeah, I think that the fuel pump might be screwed. So um, I can't hear it, but we'll give it a try. See what she's going to do. I think that was basically just the fuel that was in the t in the manifold. Yeah. But the motor sounds good and that's got all the oil pressure up and there's none of that slapping anymore. So yeah, I've got to now work out fuel pump. So I'm happy with that, that belt staying on. I tried to leave them on there because I wanted them to clean the pulleys, but that didn't really work because that one there's sort of pretty bad. But anyway, timing belt's good as we know. So Fuel pump. Righto, let's check her out. The boot had like that fish tank coral stuff in it, which is a shame because it's started to promote just some surface rust, which is annoying. I just pulled the drain plug out of that. I'm pulling the um, carpet out to get to the fuel pump holes because the fuel pumps, it's either that one or that one, I'm not sure. I've got to unscrew those plastic bits on these and pull the carpet out because I'm going to pressure wash all that and clean it. But I'm going to have to rust convert. You can just see from the moisture that they had in the boot, has sort of um, not done it any favours. But it's, it's not rusted out or rusted through, it's just luckily I've got it now and I can treat it and it'll be fine. But we've got to get that carpet out and pressure wash it for sure. These Jeremy Jackson has. I'll take a wild pump that that's rooted. Oh no. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna sit this here somewhere. That one's rooted for sure. Um, I've got a white Subaru over here, another GC8. It was a non-turbo car, but I'm guessing that um, the fuel pump setup's gonna be the same, like the hanger and everything, so I might be able to get a good one to put back in, not a rusty one. So, yeah, it's a bit pulled apart, but let's have a look, eh? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and get dirty that is in there. Can you see? See how dirty that is in there? All in the sidewalls, that's all gunk. But yeah, so it looks like it's um, tank out, which means hoist. Um, sometimes you just can't win. But that's still not a, like it's good that the fuel pump didn't work because then it would have pushed all the shit through into the um, injectors, blocked up the fuel pump, the fuel lines, everything, so. Righto, fuel pump out, I mean fuel tank out, and that gives me time to order a new fuel pump and work out a hanger. Righto, so my quick solution was pull the fuel pump out of this thing and the carrier, because it's not dirty, it do, that doesn't fix my dirty problem, but when you look at this one, it's only got one return on the fuel pump, I don't know if you can see in there. So it's only got the one return, the fuel line and one line, whereas the turbo one has two. And I thought to myself, I can pull the tank out of this, but just to get the tank out, you gotta drop the whole diff and everything because it goes up over the diff. So my quick play with the car today is not happening. So then I thought, forest is supposed to be the same when I looked online, but see that one's round and it's missing anyway. So I've already pulled this one out. So there's no point doing that. I do have a turbo forester over there, but I'd prefer not to pull it apart just to get the fuel carrier out of it because then I've just got to replace that anyway. So, I don't know. I don't know what to do now. Things got to go on the hoist in order to do the fuel tank. I don't think there's a quick, easy today um, way to sort this tank out. I don't, I don't, if I just stick a pump in it and draw that shit fuel up, I just had a guy on the phone then ask me about injector cleaning. I'm going to be in the same boat as him where, yeah, so, I don't know. Bloody cars, eh? See, this thing's absolutely filthy. Look at all that. That's bad, bad. Hmm. I don't know. I think I need to find another because the fuel gauge wasn't really working properly, which is all that, see, it's getting jammed. So, 
Yeah. What am I gonna do? I haven't got a parts WRX. Why do we do this stuff again? Righto. I still love it though. Righto. I didn't have the camera on, sorry. But anyway, so where we're at is Wayne, absolute legend, has cleaned out the fuel system in this and in that over the last two days. He's put a fuel pump in out of a GCA down the front and she's actually running now. The motor sounds really good, but still not quite right. Yeah, no, it was terrible. The tank was absolutely atrocious. Like it had like a big, thick thing through. And yeah, I think she's just running very, very lean. And righto, we'll keep playing with this and try and work out what it's actually doing. That won't matter, man. Because uh, oh, the airflow meter's there. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's that. Righto, I'm gonna sort this out, and we'll see what else. Hopefully, we'll be driving this today. Righto. So I should have been filming, but I wasn't. So. Before it was running on two and it's still running a bit rough, right? We pulled out, you pull them off, it makes no difference. So this side of the engine wasn't firing. We pulled out the plug, tested the lead, tested the plug, but then it has to come back to fuel because it had spark. So you can see just here is where the injectors are and they were stuck. So it just gave them a tap like that and it freed them up. So now we're just gonna find a battery and we can drive this thing. So, well, let's see if the clutch works on this one. That's half the problem half the time, but you get something working and then she's still not 100%, but it just needs a good run, I think. All right, it's a clutch. Yep, reverse. Yep, sweet. Got brakes, yep. Right, eh? Well, might find a battery. It's a small terminal one, though, so I don't know what I've got. We might take this for a run. So, no aircon because the aircon belt's not on, but we will see what she's gonna do. Short legs. Ah, Jeremy Jack, the car, this one. No window switches, nothing like Brakes are gonna be a bit shit to start with. I'm happy with this, dude. She's awesome. We just, luckily, Benny called in before at the workshop and goes, um, you might want to check those wheel nuts because they don't look the best and they're all loose all the way around the car, so, yeah. Right, eh? No power steering. Check engine light. It's all happening. She's just nosing over. The plug gaps in it were massive. meter because the airflow meter was disconnected and fucked so yeah. yeah and that'll make it not hold boost and nose over the box feels really good it's wanting to boost it just noses over when you go too far into it but still I'm happy with that man it could still be those injectors not flowing enough or it could be the pump we put in out of an um, non-turbo car maybe it's not the pump needs to be boost referenced or something i don't know i'll have to have a look into it come on no, it just doesn't like revving seems all right like box seems good brakes are good clutch is nice you've just got to get it to rev and boost power steering's non-existent oh, i could be um battery's flat and it's not taking charge and it hasn't got enough spark up top Filter could be blocked. It could be 
lot of things, mate. Yeah. The spark plugs were in gaps were pretty wide. They were crazy big, weren't they? Yeah. She feels pretty good, but she wants to go. Yeah. It's not worn out for sure. Wayne's a Wayne's a Mitsubishi 4G63 sort of guy. <laughs> so he's about to learn how good a WRX is. Once it boosts properly. Just doesn't want to, just knows it's over. But then you back off there and it's sort of, just as you back off it wants to go. I think the injector's probably doing cleaning out after when you've got to tap them to get them to work. It's not the best, I suppose. Oh shit. Fuck that. Oh. That's not happy at all. Burn. I think that's our standard Subaru rock cover gasket. Hmm. It's a happy car, isn't it? Nothing worse than pulling up and seeing all that smoke coming out from under the bonnet. But yeah, it's just oil, I'd say. Rock cover gasket or yeah. feed line to a turbo or something. But, um,. Something's bubbling. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a result. She runs and drives. Now I've just got to work out what that issue is. <laughs> <laughs>